Well, hello everyone. On the bench today, we have an Ameritron AL-80A linear amplifier. <clears throat> this is a 1KW amp. It's a great little piece of equipment. Uh, just covers 15 through 160. And it will help you knock through those pileups. But when it quits working, that's when the uh, problems come in. Now, before we even get started, I'm going to go ahead and tell you if you decide to work on one of these, you need to take a lot of precautions. There are deadly and lethal voltages inside this piece of equipment. And not only will it hurt you, it will kill you. So never ever plug one of these up and take the cover off. Whenever you do take the cover off, make sure it's unplugged. Bleed off the uh, capacitors and check them to make sure that there's no voltage left in them. It can really make for a bad day. I'm going to drop this off and he told me that it was working fine. He uh, went out, he come back, he went to it. Had no power output. He looked in through the side vent and the 3-500Z tube was not lit up. So, and really, you know, I said before, always listen to what the piece of equipment is telling you. Most of the times, it will tell you what the problem is. And since the tube filament was not glowing, we sort of know exactly where to go to to find the fault of this amplifier. So I'm going to go ahead and get the case off of it. As you can see, the uh, power cord is here tied up. It's not plugged in. So I'm going to go ahead and get the cover off and we'll have a peek inside. And with the cover off, you can see back here in the back, we have this switch that engages as soon as the cover is lifted off. This shorts the high voltage to ground. That's another reason why you make sure you never have it plugged in. Also on top of the transformer, you see it in big, bold letters, danger, lethal voltages. And it tells you, never remove cover with power mains connected. Always check for high voltage discharge filter capacitors before servicing and normally what I do I have some resistors that I'll clip into the high voltage section and let it drain down this way we can be sure there's no voltages left and then test with a voltmeter on the plate of the tube and make sure there's no voltage left in it so again you know the customers already told us what was happening the tube was not lighting up so with that you want to just go around and look and see if you see anything that is out of the ordinary any burnt components blowed components or whatever but most of the time if the tube's not lighting up is either a it's going to have no filament voltage B the tube socket is gotten defective. C. The operator standby switch is defective. D. The tube itself has created a problem. So, the very first thing I'm going to check before getting here and trying to check the switches and getting it powered up and checking filament voltages is the most simplest thing to do it's after you have everything bled off and you're sure there's no voltages on it simply take a screwdriver and loosen this plate cap and go ahead and get this cap poured off and out of the way and remove the tube
then we're going to get in here and we're going to look at this uh, tube socket real good just to make sure that um, you know it's not a connection issue what happens is it's like a little u-shape connector and it's got a clip across it that holds it together so when that pin goes in it's tight on that pin but a lot of times it'll get loose connections and these things will start corroding get hot and they'll open up on you so we'll get in here and take a look not seeing nothing out of the ordinary down there you can see inside the holes and all the uh, contacts look good and clean and they all look like they're nice and tight so that doesn't seem to be a problem whatsoever and while you're in this thing go ahead and take an air hose and blow it out cause you know amplifier with a fan in it is going to uh, suck in a lot of dust so all that needs to be cleaned out the next thing we need to look at is the tube itself and you'll go here and you'll look at the pins of the tubes and I have seen these things get so hot that the solder will just melt and run right out of the bottom of the pin. Now the tube pins, as you can see, come through this insulator and into these terminals and they're soldered in place. But not seeing any uh, solder that's run out. Everything looks pretty good. Here's a bit of a black spot over here on this side, but it's not that bad. And to show you just how it easy it is to find a problem, you can see the pin going into these terminals. Check that out. See, I'm able to move the terminal away from the uh, tube. This one is tight. It is still soldered in very good. That one's still tight. This one is completely loose. Yep, exactly what the problem is. These pins have became desoldered from the terminals. And you can't get any filament voltage this way. So what we got to do here is remove all the solder off of these terminals and get this off and clean those pins. Get all this old solder cleaned out clean the inside of these terminals and put it back together so all I did was took my hot air and I just heated one pin you can see exactly what's going on here you look at these pin terminals You can see just how corroded they are. See all this green. That one doesn't look too bad. But they all got dull solder on them. Which means they were not making any contact whatsoever. Now this is the one that was making contact. But you can see it's also green to start with. So it won't been long before this last terminal was going to fail. I'm using an X-Acto knife to just uh, remove the brunt of the corrosion off the tube sockets. And I'm only going to remove it on the last quarter inch of the uh, pin. Now when you're doing this, you got to be very careful. Because you do not want to... Uh, push too hard on it and crack the tube so 
I just want to get all this corrosion off by hand. And then after I get all these done, I'm going to use some uh, fine sandpaper and go back over it, each one of them. No need of trying to uh, clean the whole pin of the tube because if you do, um, this pins are coated, so you don't want to remove that coating from the rest of the uh, pin. If you do, then later on that pin is going to start corroding on further up this way. You don't want to do that. But I will come back with you when I get all this done. You have to make sure any time that you're working with something like glass to uh, wear safety glasses in case it was to shatter you don't end up with glass in your eye because that can happen I've got the two pins clean I've got some flux on it I'm going to go ahead and uh, retin them we make sure we get a good bond when we go to salt them back in try to keep your iron temperature as low as you can where you can put a lot of heat in the glass if you're worried about putting a lot of heat in the glass you can always clip a couple of alligator clips to use them as thermal sinking. All right, now I'll get the flux cleaned off, and we got some nice, pretty, clean tube pins. And a lot of times, to uh, get the old solder out of the uh, tube pin, again, you know, you don't want to heat this so much that you start burning from the uh, phenolic material. You can just a little solder on your soldering there and there that way it gets some good heat transfer let it heat up the end of the pin just give it a good slap on the table yeah the solder everywhere but it comes right off and then with a little fine drill bit and you just go through to push out anything that's still in there now you may be wondering what caused this failure and the problem is it takes it doesn't take as much heat to heat this terminal up as it does the tube pin so they're soldering it from the end so you get good heat at the tip of the uh, terminal 
and that heat doesn't transfer completely inside to the tube and the tube pin doesn't get as hot and that leaves a cold solder joint. And anytime you have a cold solder joint, you end up with a problem. Also, don't forget when you do this, if you're doing it this way, your bench top's going to have a bunch of solder on it. Make sure you clean that up so you don't scratch up a radio that you're working on. solder on it, heat the end of the terminal, give it a slap on the bench, and it all gets cleaned out. Not hard at all. Alright, let me get this cleaned up and uh, we can look at putting our tube back together. Alright, both pieces are cleaned. We should be able to slide our end cap back on all two. I'll get you a close up of that. You can see the uh, pins of the tube are right there at the end of the tube socket. Don't try to force this down any further. Just make sure it's on there and good and level. And we can go ahead and pile a little flux and solder these back in. Alright, I have the pins all soldered back up, cleaned up. Get the tube a good wipe down. Get all the fingerprints and everything off of it. And we can put it right back in the amp. And she should be good to go. And then put our plate cap back on. ahead and put the top cover back on. Alright so now for the time of testing I got the cover back on I got several screws back in it. Again always make sure you have the cover on when you power this up. I've got the uh, amplifier connected to a uh, limited supply and we're going to turn the power on. You can see our tube is glowing. Alright, so now that we know that our two filaments are lighting back up, I'll take this over to the RF bench and test it out and make sure everything's okay. I don't do all that on camera. I don't like to uh, expose the camera to RF and the other test equipment here on the bench it's just something I've never done so you know trying to be a little cautious at things so the amp puts out good power everything looks good on it uh, two problems I did find one is the transmit LED does not work I've already checked it it's blown it's got to be replaced and the peak RF watt meter, the two lamps that are on top of it up here are blown. And I just checked my stock and I only have one in stock. So 
when I replace these I like to go ahead and replace all of them that way everything has the same brightness so I got to order some of those I'll go ahead and order a couple dozen of them you know it's always hard to keep up with parts in stock uh, I really need to uh, sit down and do an inventory but that will probably take me six months to do because there's so many boxes of parts in this place <laughs> and you know you I find myself I either I never have the uh, the part on hand or I'll order it and I go to put it up and I find I've already have a dozen of them so yeah I have to work on that but anyway I'll go ahead and get that done and get this thing buttoning up and back to the customer and with that in our last video in the FL 101 we had a vacuum tube voltmeter from Heath kit that we were going to give away and that meter magically appears here so uh, we're going to go ahead and give this away I'm not going to do it the way I've been doing it I'm going to start doing it differently um, and we'll go ahead and do that now And congratulations to Nikki Girl 69 <laughs> and very interesting comment but uh, yeah the meter is yours if you'll click down below on the show more tab you'll follow the link to my website to get my contact information send me an email with your address and I'll get this thing boxed up and I have to look to see if I have a probe I can't promise promise you that I do because I've gave several of them away if I got a probe I'll put with it if not you'll have to get a probe and you'll need to go ahead and recap and test and make sure everything is uh, working correctly like I say there's one spot up here at the top that you'll need to uh, buff out of the uh, this clear lens but uh, that shouldn't be no problem other than that the meter looks real good so uh, congratulations again to Nikki Girl 69 for winning the Heath Kit. And this is the IM18 vacuum tube voltmeter. Sorry to those of you that did not win. You know, there was uh, like 110 requests for this meter. You know, and only one person can win. But there's be more giveaways coming up. We even have some more of these we'll be giving away. So if you didn't win this time, try again. You know, it's always good to uh, be able to get stuff and uh, send stuff out. If, and those of you that have stuff that's, you know, uh, not to your needs, you want to send it in again, click the Show More tab. You can get my information there. And big thanks to all my Patreons because uh, you guys has helped to... Uh, get parts and stuff for a lot of these projects that we have uh, the FL100 or FL101 that had the bad meter uh, one of the viewers emailed me he found one in the UK and it was from uh, actually a, a youtuber in the UK happened to have it a uh, hi-fi single sideband so I went on the uh, website and went ahead and ordered it and it should be here in a few weeks so we'll now have a uh, a meter to replace the bad one in the uh, 101 also I decided that I'm going to try my best as soon as I get the chance we'll sit down we'll tear that meter apart we'll rewind that cord I said go ahead and do it on camera we'll get that cord rewind and uh, see if we can get that meter fixed so we'll have a spare here in the shop and you can see through the magic of YouTube how meter lamps has been replaced I went back with incandescent lamps instead of LEDs um, with this circuit I just I don't know I like uh, real light bulbs instead of uh, LEDs also got the uh, transmit LED replaced it's nice and bright so uh, 
she's all ready to go. I'll contact the uh, owner and he can come on by and pick this piece up. Again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoy your little quick repair. It's not nothing real hard about it. Again, you know, when you're working on this, be safe, be careful, and live another day to work on something else. And congratulations again to Nikki Girl 69 for winning the heat kit back into voltmeter. Again, uh, get in contact with me, and I'll get this thing boxed up and shipped out to you shortly. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave your comments down below. Click on the show more, show more tab, and uh, you can follow the link over to the website and over on Patreon you like to support I'm still uh, working on some patreon stuff and I think I may be putting some videos up there just for patreon before long but we'll see how that goes and again till the next video we'll see you then bye now